Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're gonna teach you how to make kugula. Or maybe kugulis? Kugalis? That sounds like medication. This is a Lithuanian dish. John is Lithuanian. Courtney might be. I'm a quarter Lithuanian. You are still? I mean, removed. Yeah, quarter Lithuanian <laughs> removed. If you spend five minutes Googling Lithuanian food such as I did, you will quickly learn that in Lithuania, they mainly eat potatoes. And this is a potato dish. I never made this dish before, but I have had it before. And so the first step tonight is gonna be call your mother-in-law. So let's, let's do that. I'll leave her a message. Unreal, her favorite son in law. This is Michelle. I'm not available. Leave a name and number and I'll get back to you soon. Hey. Hey, Mom, it's Phil. I'm trying to make kugula or, or kugulis today. And I know you, you got a good recipe, so if you could give me a call back or any tips that you got. Okay, love you, bye. Well, she didn't answer, so we're on our own. But she'll probably give us a call back. We recently did some episodes at Urban Artifact. Um, Josh their Brewer gave us some amazing beers. Actually, I, don't, I haven't tried this, so I don't know if it's amazing, but... This is a barrel-aged dinosaur, which means it's old and sat around in a barrel for a while. This one is the Di Dimetrodon Red Raspberry. 7.7% alcohol, aged in a red wine barrel. Woo. Now, if you haven't seen that episode, or it hasn't come out yet, Urban Artifact specializes in beers that are like fruited, but in, for legal law, they have to be 51, or well, 50, above 50% alcohol from grains. Cheers. That tastes pretty old. It's got that funk Phil likes. It's so funky. I taste the barrel and the funk and the fruit and the wine. It's very funky. <laughs> I might sound a little funny today. I'm coming off the tail end of a sinus cold. I got junk in my uh, my lungs. I've been feeling my best. I'm feeling better today, but I don't sound normal. Anyways, I'm gonna start cooking. Preheat the oven to 350. Okay, and then we're gonna work with bacon and onions. I did, a, you know, a modicum of research for this, like I normally do, and the real true, or at least the folks who said they're Lithuanian, they were like, don't hold back on the bacon, just add more bacon. And I, I immediately was reminded of our experience with those German potato balls, f me, I have no idea what those were called, where they were like, it was just a big mash of potato, and we were like, it tastes like nothing, so let's put more bacon on it. So anyways, like the recipe I'm vaguely following calls for one pound, and we're gonna use a pound and a half, which is a shitload of bacon. I've also uh, been fairly foolishly Left this bacon out just for a few minutes and so it's kind of, you know, floppy. But sometimes in life you just gotta do your best. I'm gonna dice this up. Also while researching I realized that, you know, in spite of my very big brain, I really didn't know where Lithuania was on a map. So I looked that up. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm not that familiar with that particular geography, but, you know, there's, Lithuania's got Russia to the left. It's, it's to the east of Russia, but also the west of Russia. And I was like, oh, that's pretty crazy. And there's, uh, right, right, it's right below, um, Latvia, or as my wife corrected me, Latvia. You got Belarus, you got, uh, Poland in that region. And the more I was looking at it, I was like, I don't really f know anything about this place. So maybe I should learn more. Feeling ignorant today. Particularly ignorant. <laughs> Extra dumb. All right. You could use a Dutch oven or just a big pan. I'm just gonna use a big pan. <coughs> oh wow, that lit so fast. You see that? Man, we didn't even die. So I'm putting about half the bacon in the pan while I chop the other half. Look at that big old shit of bacon. Nasty. All right. You know, I think maybe I should have used the bigger like a Dutch oven. Because I think I got to put the potato shits in, in here. I don't know. Figure it out. Now, the recipe that I was looking at was called for two diced onions. Which also seems like a lot to me. I'm going to start with, well, I don't know what it is. Do. You know, if you ever got, you know, guys, you watch the show line up, you know, I'm not feeling my my besticles. I got that, that weird brain this episode tonight is brought to you by the weird brain. It's bacon. Here's a philosophical question. Should dog dicks be censored? I don't think it's lewd. This is a, uh, a fairly fine dice. More fine than uh, normal. I should have used a bigger board. Oh, no. I have nothing insightful to say. 
only despair in the decision that I've made. All right, that nice fatty bacon has made a lot of fat. We'll put in your honeys. Okay, we're gonna caramelize these. Hopefully that bacon will burn. Might have should have put these in sooner. But you can see they soak up the grease really fast, which is good because then they become little little flavor bits. So we'll be browning these for a little bit. We'll stir them around, and uh, you know you can't rush. You can't rush good food. Also, should not rush just okay food. And uh, we're not in a rush. Don't rush. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so these are gonna cook, and we'll steer, steer them periodically. And then we'll start working on our potatoes over here. So you gotta use five pounds of potatoes, which is, uh, that's a lot. It's a lot of potatoes. It's this many. And after buying these, oh god, I read that uh, the Lithuanians actually prefer not russet potatoes, such as these cheap potatoes, but more like uh, white or golden potatoes, which I think would make for like a fluffier, uh, what's the name of this dish? Kugula. But, you know, it'll be fine. So I'm gonna be peeling these potatoes for a while. So peel all the potatoes. That's why I'm gonna do that. I finished that delicious beer, and I'm moving on to a cidre. It's European style. Just like Lithuania is European style, because it's in Europe, right? This is made by Stella Atois. Pretty nice. All right, so you gotta shred these potatoes. You only shred them like cheese, you gotta shred them finely, okay? So use one of the finer grates. And uh, I also read this as a Lithuanian pro tip. So you really gotta, see, look at that. Look at how finely that is. It's gonna be wet, we're gonna squeeze it later. And you ain't never squeezed a potato in uh, Lithuania, that's how they do it. So we'll be shredding these for a while, homies. Hang in there. We're, uh, we're almost to something food-like. I mean, the, basically, this whole thing's gonna congeal into a giant, starchy, fatty blob. <laughs> and then we're gonna put sour cream on it. So we'll be back after I shred these potatoes. You got, uh, you got a recipe for kugula? Absolutely, I do. You want me to send it to you? Can you, do you, do you know it off the top of your head? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and Potatoes? How much do you want to make? Uh, just like a big casserole. I would use five pounds of potatoes. Okay. A large onion grater. Okay. Um, a large onion grater. Okay. Three quarters of a cup of water. Okay. Um, and then you want to put the potatoes in the blender. Do you put any milk in yours? You can. You can put like heavy cream in it. Oh wow. You bake it, I think it's like 350, but at least an hour until it's browned. Okay. Crazy on the top. And then you serve it with sour cream. Did you, do you grate your potatoes or what do you do with them? Yeah, what I usually do, I cheat. I have a salad shooter. Oh yeah. I'll figure it out. But you just, yeah. you, you mix that all up. You, you cook the bacon and onions first? Yeah, and but I pour the grease in there too. Yeah. To give it that extra flavor. With, with the two sticks of butter? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> it's amazing. It sounds great. Have fun with it. Okay. Well, cool. Okay. Thanks for your help. Absolutely. I hope it turns out for you. Yeah, I'll take a picture for you. All right. Enjoy. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. just, just, just drink a little, you won't feel a thing. I, I will do that. Alrighty. Yep, love you. Alright, love you too. Talk to you soon. Alright, bye. Bye. She knew! <laughs> You got that band-aid. Uh, I managed to nick my finger on the grater, and there's a little bit of blood in my within the recipe, but it's not the first time. It won't be the last time. That's so funny. The recipe she gave me was almost dead on the one I'm following. The only difference was the milk. She said you can put heavy cream if you want. So here's our five pounds of shredded potatoes, which just look terrible. I did pour some water in here to try to prevent it from oxidizing too much, but when they're shredded this thinly, they're gonna oxidize, so. And so you can actually take this and like try to squeeze some of the water out. I'm just gonna like basically do that, but I'm not, I am not at all going for perfection because I'm gonna put some, some milk in this, so. <laughs> don't really care too terribly much. You can also use cheesecloth to make this easier to do. Like you can really wring it out, but 
I feel like it doesn't matter. Just gonna give it a couple more pushes. Push the potato. All right, that's plenty. You can see how much that reduced in size from what it originally was, okay? So now we just gotta mix everything up together. I'm gonna, gonna put butter in, but not putting two sticks of butter in. Way too much. Again, Lithuanian pro tip feedback was like, you don't need butter if you just put it in a lot of baking grease. So I'm gonna melt it a little bit. I'm, not, I'm too lazy to use the melt function. Don't got time for that. I get some eggs. I use a mixture of conventional and organic, I guess. Stick of butter. In. It looks so bad. It's so it's it's gonna turn pink and shitty. I just know it. All right, we're gonna beat six eggs. We're gonna beat them. I'm just gonna use a potato peeler. Turns out it's not that good for this. It's not that bad either. Okay, eggs. Excellent. And then these fine shits with all the grease. Mamma mia. Papa Pia. Baby got the bacon. Grease. Oh my god. And last but certainly not least, one can of evaporated milk. And what is evaporated milk, you may ask? Well, maybe you should ask your grandmother, because I don't know. I think it's milk that's been heated at some point. You also could use regular milk, or my mother-in-law doesn't use none. Oh no. All right, we're gonna add some salt. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> and some pepper. And we're gonna mix it on up in this bowl that's too small. Oh no, no. Oh no, no. No, 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 it's a little bit warm. It's a bacon grease in my hands. It feels wrong. It feels so wrong. I think I might need a bigger bowl. It kind of looks awesome. It's like a giant bacony. Oh God, what is this? Yeah, I feel good about this. I feel real good about this. It's also one of those things you bake for like a hour so how bad could it be i'm not too concerned that it's a little bit wet all right i'm gonna put it in a casserole you don't, you don't gotta grease the pan there's no grease in this for like nine casseroles sweet santa maria jesus christ mary joseph and all the saints too oh no, no. <laughs> you know it feels weird that this doesn't have cheese maybe that's just because i'm an american wow look at that look, think of yeah think of the how did we get that volume perfect Okay. All right, folks. Let's season the top. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. That's pepper. There's only seasonings of salt and pepper you could add other things, I guess, but then give it a little jiggle. That's for good luck. And then put that bitch into the oven carefully, very carefully, and bake for at least one hour. Okay. We'll be back with updates. Yeah. <laughs> It's been some time, a little bit over an hour, we had some smoking of the oven issues. Which was caused by excess grease dripping into my oven and then burning. I placed a pan below it and that has helped, but you can still see just the absolutely preposterous amount of grease in this thing. I'm gonna let this cool briefly, knowing that it's gonna burn us, and then we're gonna cut and serve. This, this is like, you took some carbs, Shredded them up real tiny and then put as much fat as possible. And that's how you made it. Film this bad dog. Film this awful dog. Iggy, what did you do? What did you do? Okay. All right, let's give it a cut we're gonna go for a corner piece because i think that's gonna be the most done oh god mm, looks like it might fall apart a little bit i think it'll be better once it cools like it'll congeal more yeah this looks like kind of like mashed potatoes at that point okay so i think it needs to either set or cook more or both yeah i think it'll i think it'll set so maybe in a couple minutes we'll <laughs> cut it again, but I'm just gonna try this because I, I can't wait no more. I'm putting sour cream on it to cover how ugly it looks. All right, so here it is. It's not as firm as it should be because it hasn't had time to cool and set, but I don't care. We don't have time. It's delicious. It's very, very rich, and it tastes like bacon and onions. Mmm, it's definitely better with sour cream. That really rounds it out. I think texturally it'll be much nicer once it sets. But holy moly, that's like, uh, that is 
Oh god. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely good. I can see how this this absolutely falls into the uh, the realm of home cooking comfort food. It tastes like clogged arteries. Is what it tastes like. It reminds me a little bit of the egg dish that we made, egg casserole. It's good. I, I would eat that, and I think it'll be even better once it sets and yeah, you, know, you can reheat it. But yeah, nice job, Lithuania. So that's how you do it. Tune in next week for uh, you know more European geography. <laughs> okay, bye.